Okay, I hope uh, you are all having a wonderful Lord's Day. Our weather here is absolutely gorgeous. Um, Tim's at a potluck at church. I stay home and watch online because I, I can't get exposed to any germs. That wouldn't be good for me. And Oh, I do miss the fellowship, but I have wonderful people that come when they know they're feeling well, and we have one-on-one -on -one fellowship during the week quite a bit, and uh, I'm blessed that way. So, uh, let's finish up Christ is the Bread, and this is going to be pretty short. And, uh, yeah, it's going to be pretty short. Um, so, here we go. Food is necessary daily to keep your strength up and to keep your mind sharp. So is a dose of the bread of life. If you want to grow spiritually, produce fruit, and walk closely with the Lord, you need daily sustenance. Why do we think we can feast on a Sunday morning and then eat absolutely nothing for six days and be growing in our, our spiritual life? We need a slice of bread every day. And what does that boil down to? time in the word. I'm starting to sound like a broken record, aren't I? But that physical weakness and mental strain that comes with a lack of food is a direct analogy of what happens when you starve spiritually. What does it look like when you are spiritually weak? Well, I think you know this. <clears throat> but it's not pretty. When you don't gear up in your spiritual armor every day, your defenses drop and sin can easily take over. When I counsel at church, one of the first questions asked is what the counselee's walk with Christ looks like. Usually it's non-existent, and the excuses start to spill all over the place. But do we ever make excuses for why we haven't eaten for days, months, and usually years? That would be absurd. <clears throat> we pay more attention to what we eat on a given day than to what we wear what comes out of our mouth, and what time we go to bed at night. Why is that? Because we can't live without food. In that same vein, we cannot survive without the bread of life. He provides the word for us and gives us the spirit to enlighten our understanding. And all we have to do is feast. I think Jesus used the description of bread to point to the daily need for spiritual sustenance. And the word is food, uh, uh, full of all sorts of entrees. There are appetizers and finger foods. Those are the one verse nuggets that give us a taste that keep us wanting more. And we know that God causes all things to work together for good to those who love God, to those who are called according to his purpose. Romans 8.28 Puts a smile on your face, doesn't it? But then the questions start to flow. God causes all things? That's a 100% word. Maybe I should study sovereignty. 
What does it mean to love God? How do I hear that calling? What are the purposes of God? Perhaps I should read the whole chapter. Then there are a multitude of main courses to choose from. You have book studies and word studies, character studies and timeline studies. You can compare scripture with scripture, which I heartily recommend in any study. Read through the life of Christ. Wade through the law. <clears throat> Tackle a prophet. Learn how to put off sinful habits and put on righteous ones and find out what is going to happen when Jesus comes again. Take a look at the menu and just choose one. Do you remember back in the shepherd chapter that I mentioned the word loving kindness? <clears throat> My mother was the one who encouraged me to study that word. She told me to take my Strong's Concordance and copy the page that has the list of references where that word is used. Then she told me to look up all the verses and read the surrounding ones for context. When I was done, she told me I would have an accurate understanding of what the word loving kindness means. And here is what I found. Loving kindness is never used in the context of human love towards anyone or anything. It is only used of God's love toward man, towards man. And it is, a, it is a chasing love, a pursuing love. If it is chasing and pursuing, it tells me that the object of its affection is running away. This word teaches me that in my sinfulness, I will always run in the opposite direction of God. However, in his gracious mercy, he continues to pursue me. He chases me down. He loves me that much. How kind is that? A simple word study. Try it. Thanks, Mom. And then there's dessert. Mmm, I rarely can refuse a sweet ending. Dessert is one of those things that just puts a smile on your face. And it doesn't take much effort. It's just simply a food we love to eat. A slice of Costco double chocolate cake with chocolate fudge frosting. Oh yeah, you know what I'm talking about. Cake and a cup of coffee. So what does that look like in scripture? A beautiful psalm describing the greatness of God. A favorite passage from your past, past that brings his provision to mind. A description of heaven. Those chapters in Job that bring the awe of your creator into perspective. Or even just a fam familiar verse reminding you of how loved you are. For God so loved the world that he gave, John 3.16. Come, come on, smile. That's dessert. It's so sweet. The Lord gives us focus, or the word gives us focus. It gives us understanding and confidence in God. It instructs us and corrects us. It is sustenance, plain and simple. That's why Jesus said that he was the bread of life. If you feast on him in his word, you will never go hungry. One last note. 
for all you cynics who are quoting the Beatitudes in your heads. Don't be fooled. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. It is not a contradiction to John 6. I can hear you now. If we feast on the bread of life, how can we hunger and thirst for righteousness? Question for you. Have you ever been hungry more than once? How does that happen if you eat after the time, after the first time you are hungry? Hunger is a returning state because food only satisfy, satisfies for a time. Same with spiritual food. The more you eat, the more you want. You can fill up on it, but eventually you need to eat again. Blessed are the ones who hunger after the things of God, because the bread of life will satisfy them, and there's always enough for seconds and thirds and fourths. So if you're a little hungry right now, feel free to put this book down and get a snack. I recommend nine or Luke 9.23. And that's the end of the chapter on Jesus, the bread of life. Uh, such a good one. So many good uh, activities to our spiritual disciplines to be involved in when it comes to the word. And I guarantee you, you will be blessed and you will come away just full. And any time you spend time in the Word, it's, it's the best time. Okay, well, our next chapter is The Wonderful Counselor. Oh, this ought to be good. So, um... Enjoy the rest of this Lord's Day and your family. And uh, I love you all and thank you for listening.